Welcome back to Matt's Movie Nights, where I recommend movies and then we talk about them. Uh, last time, I talked about the Street Fighter trilogy. The day after Sonny Chiba died. That was somewhat unfortunate timing. <laughs> um, if, if you've seen the last video, I, I cut in with me, like, like the day he died, I cut in... I recorded me going like, hey, he died, but I recorded this whole video when he was still alive. So, um, uh, R.I.P. Sonny Chiba. That's good actor. I really like him. I like a lot of the stuff he's in, um, including The Street Fighter. He's also in our first movie today, The Sister Street Fighter. So, Sister Street Fighter, I called it The Sister Street Fighter, it's just Sister, there's no The. Sister Street Fighter is about, uh, let's see if I can pronounce this, Etsuko Shihomi. That's probably close. It's Etsuko Shihomi? Etsuko Shihomi. We're gonna, we're gonna go with that. Etsuko Shihomi, um, who is... I think Sonny Chiba's character from Street Fighter's sister, but on the other hand, I'm not actually sure this is an official Street Fighter sequel. I think this was just a Sonny Chiba film made the same year as the other three Street Fighter movies. And so when it came to America, they're like, ooh, Sonny Chiba's in this, and the main character is his sister. We'll call it Sister Street Fighter. I'm not saying that's what happened. Uh, everything I've found indicates that probably this is an official Street Fighter sequel, but I couldn't get an answer one way or the other. I don't know that this is a Street Fighter sequel in Japan, because in Japan, the title is like The Lady Dragon or something. So I don't think this is... An actual sequel to... Because Sonny Chiba's character has a different name. He goes by a different name in this movie. So that's what makes me suspect this is not a direct sequel to The Street Fighter. And that it was just called Sister Street Fighter in America. So uh, Sonny Chiba's sister is... Uh, well, caught up in a gang war. Same as... Same as Sonny Chiba does. She's uh, assigned to rescue and protect this one woman from a gang. Um, so un unlike Sonny Chiba, who's an assassin, she's more of a protector. Um, which I think does give her uh, a bit of a, an easier edge in these movies. I think I think there's there's a little moral ambiguity to Sonny Chiba's character in the Street Fighter series, whereas I think uh, Etsuko Shihomi, Etsuko Shihomi's character, I think is pretty unambiguously a good guy. Um, so Sonny Chiba does show up in this movie, and he does do some fighting, but mostly it's uh, his sister. And, um, there's, there's not as many, like, wild, off-the-wall kills in this one. There's some. There's some good kills in this. But it's not, it's not as crazy as the Street Fighter. But I still really enjoyed it. I still, it was, it was a very fun story. Um, in, in spite of... You know, some toned-down violence. The violence is definitely toned... Not that much. Not by that much. There's still a lot of violence. But I think the story works maybe even better than the story did in The Street Fighter. Um, so it's, it's a pretty fun movie. Truth be told, I kind of enjoyed 
all three of these Sister Street Fighter movies more than I did the second two Street Fighter movies. This, this I think, is a better trilogy. I think all three movies have, like, a decent enough story, whereas I the, the story is so paper-thin in the Street Fighter movies. And the, it's not like these are, like, complicated plots, but they are plots. They move the story forward a lot better than they do in the Street Fighter movies. I, I think this is a better trilogy. I would argue The Street Fighter is probably better than any of the Sister Street Fighter movies, but I think all three of these Sister Street Fighter movies that I watched, there is a fourth one, the three that I watched are better than the two Street Fighter sequels. It, it is a tad awkward because in this movie, uh, uh, Sister Street Fighter is part of like, she trains at this dojo with a bunch of swastikas around it. And I know that means something different in Japanese culture. Uh, the, the, the has a lot more meaning to the... So it, it pops up from time to time in kung fu movies. Uh, Japanese and Chinese kung fu movies. You'll just see characters wearing swastikas and you're like, Oh, woo, ee, hmm. But, like, they were using it long before the Nazis were. The Nazis totally stole that symbol, and that kind of sucks. Um, and I'm glad the Chinese and Japanese are still... I'm glad they had it beforehand so that they can kind of go, Nah, you, this is uh, our symbol. This is for us. This is our dojo's symbol. But <laughs> it does not make it any less awkward for me, as a Westerner, to be sitting there and all of a sudden the, the the good guy is teaming up with, like, guys in swastika outfits and you're like, whoa, mm, hold on. <laughs> hey, okay, okay, it's Japanese, I get it, it's, it's okay, it's Japanese, I'm not gonna... I know they're not Nazis, I know they're not actually Nazis, but there is that, that gut reaction where you're like, hold up. Where would wire wire swastikas? Uh, another weird thing: all three of these movies, she she has so many siblings and and relatives. Like in the first movie, uh, like Sonny Chiba is her brother, and they also talk about like another one of her brothers. And then in the second movie, like her sister has gotten caught up in this like, drug ring plot. Um, so that's... So, so her t the second one's about her sister, and then in the third one, she it opens with her with, I think, another brother. It might have been her cousin. And then, like, the main plot revolves around, like, rescuing her cousin. And it's like, how many relatives do you have? Like, at, at least three siblings... And then, uh, at least two cousins, and all of them are caught up in, like, kung fu gang shit. This is... your family's got issues. Oof. So the second movie, um, is about Sister Street Fighter hanging by a thread. Is about Sister Street Fighter's sister... Uh, who, who has become involved with this gang who's, like, moving drugs and also moving gold in, like, a weird science way. They're, like, breaking the gold down into its base element, which, uh, gold is an element, so I don't think that works. But they're breaking it down into, like, three or four different chemicals, and then they're filling bottles with these different chemicals and shipping the chemicals across borders, and then once they're across the border, we mix them back together, and ha-ha, they're gold again. Uh, I'm not a chemist, but I don't think that's that would work in real life. But who cares? It's an interesting movie. <laughs> uh...
Yeah, they're smuggling gold across borders in multiple liquid forms. Uh, and also some drugs. There's heroin in there. It's very... It, it gave me some Enter the Dragon vibes. Because like, cause they have like this whole underground base where they're doing all this chemistry and making all these drugs and using the drugs to keep their prisoners there. I don't know if that was in Enter the Dragon or not. I, someone... Someone was out of it on heroin in in Enter the Dragon, I think. In this movie, it's a little more personal, because it's Sister Street Fighter's sister who's on the drugs. Um, so she, she's got to, like, rescue her sister from this gang. Um, um, it is It is probably the least interesting of the three. I still enjoyed it. I still enjoyed it quite well, but... It's not quite as exciting as the first two. It's just like, oh, someone's been kidnapped. Yeah, and then Sister Street Fighter and the girl she's working with beat the shit out of everyone. And it's fun! Yeah, uh, Hanging by a Thread, also a lot of fun. And then you've got Return of the Sister Street Fighter. Um, I think they do call her The Sister Street Fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That time they call her The Sister Street Fighter. In Return of the Sister Street Fighter, her cousin has been kidnapped, and she's working with, um, her cousin's sister, and I think her cousin's brother, who dies very early on. It might have been her brother who dies very early on. I kind of missed that. I'm not good at keeping track of how people are related to each other in movies, in case you haven't noticed. Um... <laughs> But she's she's working together with, like, a relative of hers, and he tells her, like, Oh, hey, uh, our cousin has been kidnapped, and you gotta go find her. And so she's working with her, her cousin's sister, and uh, also her cousin's daughter is in the movie. Her cousin's daughter is a big plot point within the movie. Of course the little girl's gonna get kidnapped. You put a little girl in a kung fu movie. That chick's not gonna make it to the end of the movie without getting kidnapped. Of course they're gonna kidnap her. You don't... Don't put children in action movies. Children in action movies are gonna get kidnapped. That's just an inevitable fact of action movies. Man, uh... Just the most amazing shit happens in this movie. Uh, the, the big drug dealer guy is like, oh, I, I need someone to, like, go kill Sister Street Fighter so she doesn't, go kill the Lady Dragon, that's what they call her, they call her the Lady Dragon, because that's what the, the series was called in Japan. That actually gives me some Bruce Lee vibes, too, because Bruce Lee was, like, the dragon, and then every... Bruce Lee knockoff tried to call their guy, like, the new dragon or something. <laughs> so, it's a lady dragon, because she's like Bruce Lee. I think they are deliberately trying to invoke Bruce Lee with that. Maybe not, but I, I'm pretty sure they are. Uh, so he, he hires all these people, and he has, like, a big kung fu tournament to, like, who, whoever's the greatest kung fu master, I need you to go kill uh, the, the sister street fighter. And he gets these four guys, one of whom straight up looks like a fucking, like, Robert Rodriguez character. He looks like he is straight out of a Robert Rodriguez movie. Because he's got, he's got like this black velvet shirt that he always keeps unbuttoned and he's got a big tattoo of a snake on his chest and then he wears a snake skin jacket over his black velvet shirt and this big cowboy hat and I'm like this is th this character could show up in a Robert Rodriguez movie and I wouldn't even blink like this he he looks like a Danny Trejo character. He looks like he could be played by Danny Trejo. <laughs> He's an amazing character. I, lo I love his character design. He's perfect. I love him. Uh, I'm editing this. I'll see if I can put up a picture of him. Look at that shit. Look at that shit. He looks like he belongs in a Robert Rodriguez movie.
So he's he's one of like these four big winners of this kung fu competition. And then this other guy just strolls in and he's like, Ha, huh, I could do it all on my own. And to prove it, he kills one of the four winners. Um, not the Danny Trejo guy, but uh, one of the other four that won. Just to prove he's the coolest, toughest, and strongest. And so the, the coolest, toughest, and strongest dude gets in this fight with uh, Lady Street Fighter, Sister Street Fighter, and um, <laughs> at some point uh, he, he decides to take Sister Street Fighter's side. I, I think I missed that. Because all of a sudden, like, after that fight, he's just working with Sister Street Fighter. Uh, like, like, first off, at the end of the fight, he helps her fake her own death. And then, from that point on, they're working together. Um, I don't know if maybe because she was such a good fighter, he's like, ooh, I can't kill her because she's too good a fighter. Let's instead take down the bad guy or if he was always planning on cro double crossing the bad guy i'm i'm unclear maybe the movie said it and i just missed it but i it's kind of just seems like it comes out of nowhere just he's working for the bad guy and then all of a sudden he's working with sister street fighter but that's fine because it leads to a really cool climax where the two of them raid uh the the drug dealer's hideout and fucking beat everyone to death and then they run into the uh the big boss's office and then they both like roundhouse kick him at the same time <laughs> like like kung fu hustle style <laughs> just both kick except this time it works he did they both just run in and kick him in the face and then like I think they beat him to death with some gold bars. At the very least, they, like, kick him into some gold bars, and he dies just, like, on a pile of gold. Very dramatic. Very climatic. That's, that's I think, what, what the other Street Fighter movies were missing, is, like, a good, strong climax like that. That's a good climax. That's exciting. That's... That's what having more of a plot does for you. You can have a more satisfying climax when there's something driving to that climax. Um, all three of these were directed by, let's see if I can pronounce this, Kazuhiko Yamaguchi. I'm pretty sure I'm saying Yamaguchi right, because I think I've heard that name before. Kazuhiko. Kazuhiko Yamaguchi. Um, who directed Wolf Guy, the other Sonny Chiba movie we've talked about. <laughs> um, he, he directed all three of these as well. Um, not the fourth one. The fourth one was directed by the guy who directed Street Fighter, but we'll, the, the Street Fighter trilogy. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, this is a nice box set put out by Arrow. Um, <laughs> I say Arrow... Like, like in, on, on the levels of obscurity, I would put Arrow Video like a step below Shout Factory. So it's kind of funny to me that Shout Factory put out Street Fighter and then Arrow Video put out Sister Street Fighter. Although I think they put this out before Shout Factory put out the Street Fighter trilogy. I think there was a, a Blu-ray collection of Sister Street Fighter before the original Street Fighter. I might be wrong about that, but at the very least, I had the Sister Street Fighter collection before I had the Street Fighter collection. This is something I bought, I, there was about a year there where I lived with my parents, but I was working at Pizza Hut, and so all I had to pay for was car insurance and gas money, so I just had like a shitload of disposable income, and I was just buying whatever the fuck, and I'm like, oh, Sister Street Fighter collection? Sure, I'll buy that. I'll watch the Sister Street Fighter movies eventually, and I did. I have. Um, and I, I was planning on showing the Street Fighter trilogy, because I had seen The Street Fighter before. I hadn't seen any of the Sister Street Fighter movies before, so this is a triple feature of movies 
of which I have never seen any, which I, I usually try to put at least one movie in that I've seen. Um, I'm going to make up for this by doing a triple feature of movies I have seen, eventually. Tonight is another triple feature of movies I have not seen, so... D double blind triple features. Yeah, I was planning on showing the Street Fighter trilogy, and then I'll do the Sister Street Fighter trilogy, and then we'll do the, tri the triple feature we're doing tonight. Shh, it's a secret. We'll get to it at the end of the video. Um, I don't know how much else I have to say about Sister Street Fighter, though, so... I like this, I like this, uh, release. The, uh, Arrow video release. So, I would recommend this. Um, I, I would honestly maybe recommend this more than the Shout Factory one for The Street Fighter. I think that is a good box set, but... This has at least two more movies that I enjoyed. <laughs> Uh, cause, yeah, like I said, I enjoyed the first three Sister Street Fighter movies more than I did the two Street Fighter sequels. Um, so, take that how you will. So, last time I asked, uh, about your favorite female-led action movies. Um... Ob the obvious answers here being Kill Bill and Aliens. Th those are the obvious picks, so I'm gonna say something a little less obvious, and I'm gonna go with Run Lola Run, because I, I love Run Lola Run. It's one of my favorite movies. Uh, one of the very first movies I recommended for uh, movie nights, so... You, you can watch the video on that one to hear me gush about how much I love Run Lola Run. Who do we want to start with today? <laughs> it's always hard when I get multiple comments. I never know who to start with. I guess we'll start with Henry Koslick, who says, I want to say Charlie's Angels is favorite female-driven action movie, but it just wasn't that... It, it just wasn't good enough. <laughs> Which is a shame. I was really excited about it when it came out, only to be disappointed. Kill Bill, on the other hand, was perfect. Uh, yeah, Kill Bill, I said, was the obvious choice. Um, I assume he is referring to the Charlie's Angels from, like, 2003-ish. Um, the, the one with, uh, Drew Barrymore and, uh, fuck. Lucy Liu. Who's the one I'm forgetting? Who's... Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz. Uh... I assume he's referring to that one and not the one that, like, just came out with, uh... Kristen Stewart in it. Um... I haven't actually seen either, but... <laughs> I, I would like to check out the... 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 I want to, I almost said the original. The original Charlie's Angels is the one from the 70s, but that's a TV show. I want to check out the original Charlie's Angels movie. I have not done that yet. Um, I might propose it to Michael for an episode of Hollow Victories. I think we could definitely find some... We might just do the two Charlie's Angels reboots. That might be worthwhile, although I feel like there might be an obvious winner there. Yeah, I haven't seen... The Charlie's Angels movie, but I've mostly heard it's, like, kind of goofy and not great. Which is why I kind of want to check it out. Uh, Kill Bill, of course. Brilliant movie. Love it. Uh, John Cleveland gave me a whole, like, top ten list here. Um, number one, anything with Cynthia Rothrock. Uh... I love Cynthia Rothrock, but my god, her movies really start to blend together when you've seen too many of them. Uh, Undefeatable is the one that stands out to me as, like, obviously her best movie. Um, you know, ignoring uh, Cool Cat Kid Superhero, which is just undeniably the best Cynthia Rothrock movie. Number two, The Long Kiss Goodnight, which is a great answer. When he posted this, I'm like, oh yeah! That is female-led, isn't it? I love Long Kiss Goodnight. That's a great movie. Good choice. Um, Aliens, Kill Bill 1 and 2, obviously. Uh, La Femme Nikita. Great movie. 
Uh, that's, uh, mm, Luc Besson, I think. Guy who did Leon the Professional. I might be wrong about that. I might be wrong about that. But I think it's the same guy who did Leon the Professional. And the Fifth Element. Ooh, I love the Fifth Element. Um, Foxy Brown, I'm gonna maybe disagree with a little. Uh, the one I like is Coffee. I, I prefer Coffee to Foxy Brown. If, if we're picking Pam Greer movies here. Although... There's a part of me that wants to throw Jackie Brown in the mix, but that's more of a crime movie and less of an action movie. It's not, not very action-y. I, I would say it's the least action-y Tarantino movie. But, uh, Coffee? Great movie. Foxy Brown? It's, I prefer Coffee. <laughs> uh, Haywire, I have not seen. Lady Snowblood, I have also not seen. They are on my list. I, I hope to get around to them soon enough. Um, Ghost in the Shell? Big fan. Uh, one of my favorite anime movies. Which is not saying a lot because I have not seen a lot of anime movies. I think it's like, it's like that, Akira, and then just like a shitload of Studio Ghibli is what I have seen. Um... But I, I enjoyed Ghost in the Shell. I think it's a, a good anime movie. Well worth checking out. And then finally, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, which... Mm, I don't know how female-led. That's, uh, that's a bit of an ensemble piece, so... Like, I, I, I wouldn't say it is strictly female-led. I think it has a male lead and a female lead. But, I mean, good answer. Good movie. Um, Herr Tweakcat says, Geez, I can't decide between Aliens and The Next Karate Kid. Um, I haven't seen The Next Karate Kid, but I saw Karate Kid 2 and 3. 2 and 3 are not good, so I... I, I never watched The Next Karate Kid, sort of on the assumption that it was gonna be worse than Karate Kid 2 and 3. I, I like the first Karate Kid well enough. I, I really like Mr. Miyagi. I think he's a, he's the heart of the film. He drives the film. You know, I Community did the whole episode where they talk about, like, Mr. Miyagi is the one that makes the movie work. And yeah, they're right. Miyagi just is the heart and soul of that movie. Without Miyagi, you don't have a movie. <laughs> and finally, John Austin said, Alita Battle Angel. Which, um, Leo Battle Angel was nice. I, I enjoyed it well enough. It's certainly Robert Rodriguez's most normal movie. <laughs> it's not him going way off into, like, the, the crazy shit he loves to do. Um, I like seeing his crazy shit sometimes, though. I love the whole Mariachi trilogy. Even, even Once Upon a Time in Mexico, which I don't think gets enough love. Um, it does start to wear thin in movies like Machete and Machete Kills, but, eh, I like the Mariachi Trilogy. I like Robert Rodriguez. He's a good director. He can be a bit hit or miss, and Alita Battle Angel is possibly the only film he's made where I'm kind of in the middle on it. Uh, I, I either, like, love his stuff or I'm just like... God, stop. Delete a battle angel? It's fine. No one said Barbarella. Come on, where are my Barbarella fans at? Tonight, my question is, what's your favorite movie that is just blatantly ripped off from another movie? Like, like not inspired by another movie. Like, this is just a fucking ripoff. But you, you still enjoy it. You still like it. Hmm. Because, uh, I was talking about Sister Street Fighter maybe not being an official Street Fighter sequel. Well, t tonight's movies are even more unofficial. First, we've got, uh, Sister Street Fighter 5th Level Fist, which was not originally a part of the Sister Street Fighter trilogy. It was an, an extra movie that... Uh, someone else made, and then when it came to America, they just changed the title to Sister Street Fighter. 
But at least that has Etsu, uh, Et, Etsuko Shihomi and is directed by the guy who made the Street Fighter trilogy. So it at least has some connection to the Street Fighter movies. Our next two movies do not. It's Lady Street Fighter. <laughs> the the ripoff movie, Renee Harmon's... R Renee? Renee Harmon's. Lady Street Fighter. And it's, I think until recently unreleased sequel, Revenge of Lady Street Fighter. So that's, uh, that's our, our triple feature for next time. Three unofficial Sister Street Fighter movies. Uh, until then, I'm Matt. Have a nice day.